Hello everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 7 of the tutorial series on API Gateway Authorization. So guys, in this video, I'm going to take you through on how to protect API endpoint using AWS IAM authorization. So let's have a look. So here when I say API Gateway, I'm referring to the REST API and this video is also in reference to the REST API and not HTTP or WebSocket API. So now the very first thing that we are going to do is to go through a few points regarding IAM authorization. So basically IAM authorization is built in within the REST API gateway and we don't have to do any additional configuration to configure IAM authorization except simply we need to enable it. Okay. And we can use IAM authorization to protect the API endpoints at the stage level, resource level as well as the method level. And to protect the API endpoint, we need to define the IAM policy that ideally permits the caller to invoke the API endpoint. And then uh, once we have the policy in place, the user or the caller needs to submit the IAM user's access keys to be authenticated. And then the signature version 4 is used to sign the request with Amazon credential or the access key that the user is passing. So basically the signing process will be done automatically while we are using AWS HDK or AWS CLI or any other AWS tools. So here we don't need to explicitly sign the request while we use any AWS tools. Correct. So that will be done automatically for us. And then to invoke the API endpoint successfully, the caller should have execute hyphen API permission for the resource that he or she is trying to call or invoke. So we are going to have a look at the execute API in some time. So now uh, we will look at the practical implementation of the same. But before we move on, let's have a look at the steps that we are going to follow throughout this video. So here the very first step is to enable the AWS IAM authorization for the given method and the given resource. And then we will create the new user followed by the creation of the user group. Now once the user is created, uh, we are going to generate and download the access key for the created user. And then we are going to invoke and test the API endpoint without explicitly attaching the policy or without giving the permission to the user. So while we don't have the permission attached, it's going to throw an exception saying 403 forbidden or the given user is not allowed to access or invoke the API endpoint. Then we will go back and create the custom policy. So basically we are going to give the execute hyphen API permission to the user, right? And then we are going to attach that policy with the user group. And then we will go back and re-invoke the API endpoint to see how it works. Correct. So these are the steps that we are going to follow. So now as a next step, let's navigate to the AWS Management Console. Now once we are within AWS Management Console, navigate to the API Management Console and open the API where you want to configure AWS IAM authorization. So here I have this API that is auth API and I want to configure the AWS IAM authorization for this get method under IAM auth resource. Correct. So this is the simple resource that I have created with the proxy integration of the Lambda function. And this Lambda function basically returns hello from SRCE CDE. That's it. And now to configure the IAM authorization, all you need to do is click on method request. And then under settings, you would be able to see the authorization. So click on this tick mark and from the drop down, select AWS IAM. And once you select that, click on this tick mark and the configuration is done. So basically to enable authorization or to enable AWS IAM authorization, all we need to do is come to the method request, click on that pencil mark, select the AWS IAM and that's it, right? So from the perspective of the API endpoint, the configuration is done. So now as a next step, we are going to click on action and deploy this API. Why we are deploying this API or why we are redeploying this API because we have made the changes in the API. So for the changes to reflect, we need to redeploy this. So select the deployment stage and say deploy. Now the configuration from the API endpoint perspective is done. Now as a next step, we need to create the user. So for that, we are going to click on services and search for IAM. And once you are within IAM management console, click on users from the left panel under access management. And here we are going to add a new user. So click on add users from the top right corner. And here we need to give the username. So I will simply say uh, my name that is Chirag. And within access type, we need to provide programmatic access. And I don't want to provide the console access. So I'm going to simply check the programmatic access and then click on permission. 
so at this point of time i don't have any group so that's where uh, it is prompting me to create the group but uh, we will create the group at later point of time and then if you want to copy the permission from the existing user uh, right then you can click on the second option and then if you want to attach the existing policy directly then you can uh, select the third option correct but at this point of time we don't want to configure anything as a part of step two so we are going to click on next tags add a tag if you want say next review and review the changes and say create user now once you click on create user it will prompt with the appropriate message if all the configuration is uh, appropriate then it will prompt the success message right and with the success message it will prompt us to download the access key and the secret access key so we are going to download .csv file because we will require this credential to invoke the api endpoint successfully right to authenticate the request so that's where you need to download this and once you are done with this click on close now once the user is created let's click on user group from the left panel under access management and then click on create group and give the group name i will say api access something like this and then within add users to the group you can select the user from here so i will simply say uh, select this user correct and then you can attach the permission policies over here but we want to create the uh, custom policy so at this point of time we are not going to attach any policy and then we will say create group so now we have created the user we have created the group now as a next step we need to create the custom policy now to create the custom policy you need to click on policies under access management from the left panel and say create policy so before we move on, I want to highlight one point that uh, we can also perform this action without a user group, right? So we can simply create the user and create the custom policy and attach that policy with the user and not the user group, right? So that would be pretty straightforward. But let's say you have 30 to 50 users just for an example, and you want to assign the same permission for all the users. So in that case, it would be a tedious task to handle everything at the user level explicitly. So here, if you have a specific user group, then you can directly add the given user to that group and it will be easy. So you don't have to manage each user individually, right? So that's where we have created the user group, right? So now moving along, we are going to create the policy to give the permission. So we can modify the policy from here as well as from the visual editor. So here we will use the visual editor. So here within service, choose a service. Now here we need to search for execute. That is execute API. So select that. And once you select the uh, service, you need to click on actions and here expand the right option. And here all we need to provide is the invoke permission. So here I don't want to provide the uh, permission for the invalidate cache or the manage connections. So all I want to allow is the invoke, right? So that's where I have checked the invoke. Now, once you are done with the configuration of the actions, expand the resource option. So here we have two options that is specific and all the resource. So if you select all the resource, then it will uh, provide access to all the resources. And then if you want to limit the access to the specific resource, then you can select the specific option. And then uh, here we have the option for any in this account, right? So while you select any in this account, it means that you are allowing access to all the APIs in all the regions to all the methods, resources and stages, right? So basically it is open to all. So you can check this. So here you would be able to see that uh, instead of region, it's the wildcard and instead of API ID, then instead of stages, HTTP verb and the resource name, it's all wildcard, correct? So that's how the any in this account work. So what we are going to do is we are going to say add an ARN. Now here we need to configure everything, right? Like to which region we want to provide access to. So we are going to say US is one, at least in my case, correct? Now, if you select any, then it will add the wildcard over here. So now if you want to provide access to the specific API, then what you need to do is you need to copy and paste the API ID over here. So if I want to limit the access to this uh, API, then I need to copy this uh, API ID and then I can paste it over here. So basically this will limit the access to this API, correct? And then if I want to narrow down the permission to the stage level, then the method level and the resource level, then I can mention it over here. Correct. But at this point of time, I'm going to say any for now. So basically you can configure this ARN over here. You can mention the API ID. If you want to limit the access to specific API, then you can uh, mention the stage. If you want to limit the access to specific stage within specific API or 
or the method or the specific resource right so right now at this point of time accept this uh, region here we have the wildcard right so this first wildcard represent the api id second wildcard is for the stage third wildcard is for the method right so if you want to limit the access to the get method for specific resource then you can mention get over here instead of uh, wildcard correct and finally we have the resource name so here the resource in our case is iam auth so you can limit the access to the specific resource so the given user would not be able to access any other resource right so that's where you can configure all this and simply you can say add over here and once you are done with this configuration click on next tags add a tag if you want say next review give the policy name i will say api hyphen execute something like this and finally i will say create policy so at this point of time uh, we have simply created the policy but we have not attached this policy to the uh, created user or the created user group so basically at this point of time the user or the user group don't have the permission to invoke the api endpoint so it means that it does not have permission for the execute hyphen api correct so what we are going to do is we are going to try to invoke the api endpoint before attaching the policy to the specific user group that we have created so now i'm going to copy the invocation url and we are going to invoke this api endpoint so i will paste it over here and i will say the resource that i want to invoke that is iam auth and the method is get and then we are going to click on authorization and from this drop down we are going to say aws signature and once you select aws signature here you will get an option to enter the access key and the secret key so if you remember then we have downloaded the file after creating the user that is a dot csv file so open that correct and from there copy and paste the access key and the secret key so i have it open so i'm going to copy and paste the access key followed by the secret key and then we need to mention the aws region so it's going to be uss1 in my case and finally the service name is going to be the execute api right so here we have successfully configured the authorization now we are going to simply click on send so as you can see it returns status code 403 forbidden with the message saying user chirag is not authorized to perform the execute api right so basically i don't have the permission to invoke that api endpoint correct so now what we are going to do is we will go back to the iam management console we are going to click on user groups and here if you see within permission right now it's not defined so this user group don't have any permission so we are going to click on this group name and then click on permissions and within permission click on add permission say attach policy now here search for the uh, policy that we have created that is api hyphen executes so we are going to select that and scroll down and say add permissions so here we have successfully attached the policy over here and now we will go back to postman and we will simply say send so now as you can see it returns status code 200 with the appropriate response saying hello from srcecde so guys basically this is how you can uh, configure the aws iam authorization and this is how you can create the user with the user group and the custom policy and then attach that policy to provide the permission for the specific user group all right so now uh, moving along so now you might have a question that when should we use iam authorization so if the api is internal to the users then you can go ahead and use the iam authorization correct so guys uh, that's all i wanted to cover in this tutorial and till that time if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time